Hello guys, it's Carla. Today I'm going to paint this fun little landscape painting of like a forest, a foggy forest uh, with a little girl running through it. So um, this should be fun. A uh, little something different. All right, so uh, I'm using acrylic paint on a an eight by 10 canvas panel. Um, this would this would work on any size and I think it would actually look really good on a large canvas and you know hanging in either a little girl's room or your main living space really it's um, I think this could be very versatile all right so I'm gonna start with I've I've already coated this with like a blue, yellow, white mixture. I used phthalo blue, yellow, and white. Um, just a little bit of yellow. But, um, and I thinned it down and coated the whole canvas. And this will just be my background color behind the trees. And, um, and once I put my trees in, I'll come back and, and draw in the little girl she'll be about about right down here so all of this up here will be trees all right so I'm gonna start with my um, filbert brush it's about a half inch half inch filbert brush and I want to mix up a color to use for my trees and you may have to play with this for a bit to get it right, but um, I'm just gonna try some things here. So I'm gonna use phthalo blue, purple, um, maybe some raw umber, and a little touch of black. Let's see what that does. pick up a touch of white just to lighten it just just a little okay okay so my ground is gonna be about um, looks like a almost three quarters of the way down the canvas so it's going to kind of be come across like this and go off like that. So I'm, my trees are going to be starting here and going up. And I'm just using the corn, the uh, side of my brush. And I want to keep water on the brush, keep that paint thin. And I'm just going to lay in these trees with the, the side of my brush and I don't want them all to be um, parallel with each other and I don't want them all the same size or the same distance apart so just keep all this in mind as you put these in and kind of get creative with it it's hard to tell past the fog in that reference photo um, it's hard to tell how many trees there actually is, but you can put as many as you want. Now that I have a fair amount of trees back there and I have different sizes, shapes, and um, angles, and even color, I mean, even shades because, uh, or values, because I have some that um, I didn't mix up a different shade of paint, but once the paint was wearing off my brush, I kind of used it to put in some of these, like maybe more distant trees, and it 
showed up lighter. All right, now I'm gonna use my hog bristle brush and I want to put in some of the, the leaves back there. And again, I'm gonna play around with this color and I'm just gonna add this green to this mixture I have. And then darken it a little. Okay, now using this hog bristle brush, I can kind of tap in some um, leaves back here in the distance, and it'll give me that texture I want. Um, and also, also keep in mind, when you're filling all this in, you want to leave little gaps where the sky is showing through. So try not to cover up everything. And also, I'm, I'm kind of um, twisting my brush as I do this so that I don't get these everything the same, you know. I want, I want to kind of turn it and get different shapes with my brush. And sometimes I'm applying more pressure, sometimes less, and that'll give me a, a good variety of shapes and um, values. Now, as I come down closer to the horizon, I want to make it um, a little less green and a little darker. So I'm not gonna add any more green to it. I'm just wanting really kind of midnight blue shade. So I'm going to go all along my horizon with this. Because it's very solid back there. It's uh, There's not any sky showing through right, right down close to the horizon. But as you go up, you do want to start leaving little gaps here and there. And kind of tap into that green. That way you've got different colors and uh, shades going on in there. Be sure and leave some sky showing through. My color in back there. I've left sky showing through. I brought some of my uh, darker color up into my green to kind of break that up a little bit. All right, so now <clears throat> I see over here there's one large tree that is maybe not, it's kind of more forward, I guess, more, um, it's not as distant as these trees back here. Um, so it's bigger and it's a little bit darker. As things come forward, they tend to get darker and more distinct. So I just added some black to that mixture. And like I said, this tree is larger, so and it doesn't, it starts down in here, but I've not put my foreground in yet, so, uh, but it will, you know, 
it'll be closer so it'll start down here and then as you go up make it a little bit smaller I'm going to go ahead and mix up a color for my ground and okay the little girl will be right here about in the center and then on this side it looks like just a bunch of uh, dried up leaves so over here I'm going to put I'm going to use some raw umber darker for my base I'll be coming back over it with some leaves but I want the base to be dark brush this on if you want. Uh, I'm just tapping it so that I, I already have some of that texture that I want for the leaves. So I'm just going to go about halfway over. that's um, I think this over here is like a, a little dirt road and there's a lot of the light that's hitting it so I don't want to cover up all of that light and I want to keep my brush strokes kind of horizontal and this this will help it look like there's like light shining down onto the road I'm still using that hog bristle because I want to scrub with it and most of my brushes I don't want to scrub with because it will ruin them but the hog bristle is different it's made for that here for the leaves you know you really can't see any real defined leaves but it is very textured so I'm going to use my Deerfoot stippler for that you could also use like a hog bristle brush um, if you don't have a Deerfoot stippler but this is round and angled on the end so 
texture that I want and I'm not wetting it because I don't want it to get soggy on me. bristles out and just lightly tap where I want my leaves. pretty dark over here but there's some some leaves that are catching the light okay there's also a little bit of texture over here on the road too smooth and I'll add a little bit of a little bit more organic look to it. As I'm doing this, I'm kind of keeping in mind where she's gonna go, so I really don't have to pay a lot of attention to this area right here. All right, now I have dried my canvas um, very well. <laughs> you want this to be really dry and uh, cool down before we put these sun rays in there all right and to do this I'm gonna use my hog bristle brush uh, this is my three-quarter inch but you know you could use larger or smaller uh, kind of depends on the size of your canvas and the size you know like the width of your um, the width you want your sun rays so on parts of it I'm gonna use the wide edge of my brush and then on parts I'm going to use the skinny part and I'm going to use a ruler to keep these rays straight because um, it, if they're kind of wonky it's gonna it's gonna look funny all right so they seem to be coming down if I started in the corner it's coming down almost directly to that corner. Not, not exactly, but real close. So that's, that's the angle I'm shooting for. So with my dry hog bristle, I'm gonna pick up a little white. And I want to load my brush. I want to really get that white into my brush. And then I want to wipe most of it off. I want this to be very dry. All right, so with that angle, I'm gonna start up here at the brightest area. That way if I have too much paint on my brush it's not gonna be too bold so I'm very lightly dry brushing I'm 
as you get down here, it, it gets not quite as bright. So keep your brightest paint up here. I've got my angle in there I can I think I can do without the ruler now for the rest of them now they um, they kind of flare out as they get down closer this way so they're brighter up here and they're wider down here and if you want to use the ruler for all of them that's fine too just make sure you have a really dry brush This one, I'm going to leave this little gap here because this is light shining through the trees. So some of it's going to be blocked. So I'm going to leave this little gap here and get it, get these two fairly close together here. But as I come down here, that gap is going to get bigger. Just like my rays get bigger, the gap will get bigger too. So I've got, <clears throat> my gap is smaller up here and bigger down here. So I've got that. Now I want to make my sun ray bigger down here. So with, with each one of these that you put in, you've got to pay attention to uh, whatever gap you leave make sure that it gets bigger and then the ray itself needs to get bigger and lighter and if you have to go over these like several times that is way better than uh, getting too much paint on there to begin with it's much easier to add paint than take it away. I'm barely, um, I'm, I'm going pretty fast, but I'm barely touching the canvas with the tips of my um, brush. one. And 
that's pretty easy to do. Just make sure that you keep your, your um, your brush very dry so that you don't get any hard lines here. I chose up here to leave out these two lights because I want this to look natural and I feel like the only thing those can be is street lights. I can't imagine anything else that they are so I don't want to put those in there. Um, but you can if you if you like them there. Over this and get it brighter and brighter until you have until you have it as bright as you want but um, it takes layers you don't want to try for it on your first
want to to um, mix up a that kind of teal shade. in some of this color. If you don't see a big difference at first, just stay the course. Keep it um, very dry and just keep going over it until you have the shade that you want. some patience. So don't get frustrated with it. Just keep keep going with it. Go slow. Take your time. hazy look that you want without any areas that are too bright and bold and hard. this and sketched on my outline for the girl. I traced it on there. And I'm going to use my little round pointy brush and get all of that filled in.
Okay, so she's got her little arm coming back that way. There's not a lot of skin showing. But she's got her arm and one leg is showing. And the foot. All right, so now picking up a little bit of brown with a little bit darker, that darkest shade. shaded side of the arm, it's actually quite dark. sheer dress and so this is the this is that light color that I'm seeing down there is shining through this sheer fabric and it's making it kind of bright in certain areas. This dress is this shade. So right now I just want to concentrate on kind of the shape of the dress. I can come back in and put the darker tones in, but 
best shape. in the dress and you've probably heard me say it before don't be afraid of the dark you've got to put these really dark shades in in order to appreciate the lighter shades reference photo. I mean, their eye is going to tell you that this is a dress, and so it's going 
going to automatically fill in the blanks as far as until you until you have it looking not necessarily like the reference photo but um, like a dress that's the main goal this light coming through and you want to kind of let it highlight her Concentrate on her hair. So I'm going to use that brown and black mixture. Keep plenty of water on your brush. I don't want that to get too thick. And I'm going to fill in all of this. I'm going to go right over my chalk line.
kind of a gold blonde color. And I don't want to cover up all of my dark. So I want to be super careful with this. brown to get real detailed with this. I'm just, I'm just going to put in the petals. Here, there's some random little limbs. Which will mostly be covered up with uh, leaves, but some of them will show, so they need to be in there. with your liner brush. I know a lot of people have tried 
trouble with it. But if you'll hold it, if you hold it back here at the back of the brush, you won't be so um, tempted to be too controlled. is ruined uh, because now if you have let's see um, let me find a brush that okay all right so say you have a brush like this it's short bristles fairly it's got a nice point on it but because it's short bristles, uh, a lot of people think that they would have more control and that would work better, but it doesn't. It barely holds any paint, so um, you're going to get real frustrated trying to get any paint on the canvas. If you have this long, these long bristles, you've got the same point on the brush. It's just as sharp, but it holds more paint, so it allows you to, to do more. So, um, there is a lot of value in these longer bristle liner brushes, and I really don't get a lot of um, use out of the, the short bristles. Alright, so now we're going to put um, leaves on the trees. shape. 
page you want. Okay, so with this hover is what I'm just going to tap my leaves in. And I want to be very random about this. What I don't want to do, for one thing, I don't want to cover up all of my branches that I put in. Um, also, what I don't want to do is, um, okay, so see this branch that I have right here? I don't want to come through and just line it like that, because then I've got a caterpillar, you know, it looks very unnatural. You want to have... Pay much attention to your to your branches right now. Don't be afraid of the dark. If you didn't have these dark areas, your painting would look really flat.
bristle brush going to use a toothpick with just white on it to put in some really bright highlights right along where I just put that blue in. kind of thick so it leaves it bright so even when it dries it's going to be
just to kind of make her more obvious. hope you enjoyed this tutorial. It was fun and very pretty. So I hope you try it. If you did enjoy it, please give it a thumbs up. And um, if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, please do that. I'm posting videos very frequently, at least, at least one a week, but usually two or three or more. <laughs> Just trying to get a lot of content out there so that you'll have, have plenty to choose from. So, um, I really hope you try this one. And until next time.